so uh, this is an introductory object oriented programming session in python as required by the course so what is a class a class is an encapsulation of the attributes of an object as defined by the user these attributes are data members and methods and these can be accessed via dot notation so the next question arises what are data members and methods data members in a very crude sense are the variables defined in a class and methods are the functions defined for a particular use in a class okay so let's talk about why classes are needed so classes are needed because of some favorable properties that it offers like encapsulation inheritance and function overloading and there are some other properties as well okay let's briefly go over these properties so the first property is encapsulation which basically means uh, bundling all the data and methods within one unit the next property is inheritance and that can be explained by taking example of two classes a and b okay let's assume we have a class a that and you want to define another class b with the same functionality as class a but with some additions you can inherit the properties of class a into class b without writing the same piece of code again by using the concept of inheritance Okay lastly we will talk about the function overloading uh a single function can be assigned more than one behavior uh the operation performed varies by the types of objects and arguments involved for example let's consider uh, uh let's consider a function uh that is used to calculate area depending upon the type and the number of arguments in function the same function can be used to calculate the area of different geometrical shapes like square rectangle or circle etc so in this session we are going to talk about how to define classes and how to use them for different purposes in python so here is the basic template of a class you write the keyword class name of the class colon and then you define the attributes of the class so once you have defined a basic class you can define multiple instances of it for example here as we have defined two instances emp1 and emp2 of the class employee so when you print these objects it will just give you the ins the memory location of the class and not what the memory size is or what the object type is because there is no such defined data type for class so all right so if you want to explicitly or implicitly define data members of a class uh there are two methods for that the explicit way is defined over here so let's assume let's say we uh, define a class employee and we create unique instance of each we uh, using a dot operator we can define the data members as you can see over here and also if you want to print out the data members you can do uh using the dot dot operator again uh, for example over here we are printing email information of the uh, employees all right so if you want to uh, implicitly define the data members of a class we can do using the init function so this init function is same for every class and we usually use the self parameter over here so what self actually does is it points to every single data data member and data member and function um inside that class so for example over here we are defining first last pay and email if and we use self with that whenever in a function you want to call um these data members you use self again all right um okay now let's see how we define a function in a class uh as you can see over here we are defining a function called full name and we are giving self as uh, as an argument and the sole job of this function is to return the first name and the last name the method to call this function is defined over here uh for each employee object emp1 and emp2 in this case we can use we can call the function using the name of the function followed by the parentheses if you if you call the function name without the parentheses parentheses you will simply get uh, the information about that instance 
okay so let's say we do not we do not call the self as an argument in this function the code will actually run but when you go uh, when you actually call the name of the function it will show an error so you have defined the function full name in the class but you haven't actually called it anywhere or haven't given a single argument to the function so the function definition assumes that no arguments are needed for it to run but when you call it outside using the same notation as we were using earlier it implicitly assumes that if there are no if there is no argument given to the function the self is automatically taken as a argument if it is a if, if it is a function in the class so as you can see here full name takes no arguments and it says one given which is the self this is an auto way alternate way to call the function over here in the last sentence you can see that um, instead of just following this format emp1 dot full name uh, we can use the name of the class and the function and then you can use the object to call the same function all right okay let's uh, let's say that we want to create a function that calculates the pay with the raise and which is defined over here and the raise is uh, some constant multiplied by the pay so uh, we generally what we want to do is we want to define a constant variable for uh, for such hard coded values as you can see in this code over here we take a uh, variable name raise amount and then we call it over here in this, this function this is also another way to define variables so as you can see here we have not included this variable in the init constructor right. we have defined it globally right so so uh, let's say uh, we call this function apply raise we will definitely get an error over here uh, that's because we did not mention the self keyword over here and the function does not know uh, where this variable belong what the scope of this variable is if we use the keyword self in front of the raise amount variable this function will run smoothly 